In Ecuador, after 19 days of national stride, the indigenous movement and Guillermo Lasso's government signed a peace agreement for dialogue. Peru's Prime Minister Aníbal Torres announced the intention to hide a national corruption and crimes problems through judicial accusations against the government. In Spain, at the end of the NATO summit, the U.S. President Joe Biden announced an shipment of war material to Ukraine worth $80,000 million. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities and the government delegation headed by the Secretary of the Internal Side, a peace accord to initiate a dialogue process with the mediation of the country's Bishop Conference. During the meeting, the President of the Ecuadorian Bishop's Conference, David de la Torres, read a recurring decision of the mobilizations and the gradual return of the indigenous communities to their territories. The Vicious Conference stressed the need to moderate a score of demands to facilitate the agreements and promises to guarantee the fulfillment of all commitments reached during the negotiations. On its official Twitter account, the Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, CONAIE, stated that achieving results and process in the priority issues of the national agenda, the Indigenous Movement officially considers the first stage of paranational elected Ecuador in 90 days in compliance with the agreements and commitments signed in the minutes that will be evaluated. The President of Colombia, Ivan Duque, finally received the report of the Trust Commission. The Colombian President was in Portugal on the date of the official presentation of work done by the Commission hit by Father Francisco de Brooks. Duque rejected the recommendation made by the Commission on the method to choose the prosecutor. At the presentation held at the Palace of Nariño, Commissioner Alejandra Miller, Marta Ruiz, Patricia Tubon, and Leonard Palacios were also present. For the government team, the Vice President Marta Lucio Ramirez, the Head Commissioner for Peace Juan Camilo Larestrepa and Victor Munoz, Director of the Presidential Administrative Department also attended. President Duque assured that through the report's recommendations are not bending, they will severe to promote a debate. In the meantime, the president of Colombia's Truth Commission, Francisco de Rooks, thanked the president for his support to the commission's worker. I thank you very much for the way you received us. Of course, at this moment, as you mentioned, what we want is a conversation with the country. So things can be discussed in depth. It is not a document that says this is the truth and then we all have to accept it but rather for us to continue building together the country we want. Chile has extended for the first time the state of emergency decreed on May 17 for the sovereign microzone. The Congress obtained a total of 101 votes in favor, 19 against, and 13 abstention, a slightly smaller margin than about 15 days ago when it granted 126 votes in favor. According to supporters, this measure, which is enforced in the Araucanian region, has appeared, served the military to protect roads and roads in relation to the situation in the, the Araucanian region. According to the Minister of Interior, Iskia Sitches, the state of emergency has also served to reduce violence in rural areas by more than 30% since its implementation. The Secretary of Health of Mexican State of Jalisco, Fernando Pertensen, confirmed two new cases of monkeypox in tourists. The official explained that there are now nine people infected in the state, while he warned that two suspect cases are being on follow-up. He also explained that the first sick person was an U.S. tourist who presumably was infected in Texas and was uh, cautionating in the state of Coast in Maine. 
On the other hand, Peterson ruled out the existence of community transmission as he shared that all those infected contracted the virus through contract with foreigners. In the U.S., several drugstore chains have temporarily limited orders of contracted Contracts have expelled following the annulment of the constitutional right to abortion decided by the Supreme Court. Among the pharmaceutical changes that have related per case of such pills are CVS, Raid, and Walmart, and Amazon, which establish limits of per case between the three or six units per week of the drugs. Some of them have the intention of regulating the demand so that there is a cancer supplied, but others are in line with the decision of the Supreme Court. It should be noted that the highest judicial body in the country annulled the ruling that granted freedom to terminate a pregnancy and does have put an end to the constitutional guarantees that protect women. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back. First, Prime Minister Nival Torres announced the intention to hide the national corruption and crime problems through judicial accusations against the government. Torres warned that such accusations against the executive lack support, evidence, and call for transparency within the country's institutions. The President of the Council of Ministers allowed to the investigation that the Public Prosecutor's Office has opened against the President Pedro Castillo for allegedly being a member of mafia that operated inside the Ministry of Transport and Communications. Finally, Torres urged the judi judiciary and the public minister to combat crimes in Peru. In developments in the investigation of the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse, 33 policemen were fired and three other prosecuted for their alleged involvement in the case. According to the spokesman of the National Police, Gary de Sorier, the authorities in the charge of investigation received a file with the information gathered so far. An administrative investigation conducted by the General Inspectorate of the National Police led to 20 people arrested and 12 others wanted by the police both nationally and internationally, added the size of weapons, documents, and vehicles related to the murder in July 2021. The Haitian government declared July the 7th, one year after the assassination, a non-working date, a decision adopted by the Council of Ministers, while the family and supporters of President Moïse still express their rejection of a lot of meaningful results in the investigation. United Nations investigators provided alleged humanitarian rights violations by the Ethiopians in its another conflict confirmed that they have been given the, light, the green light to visit the capital Addis Ababa, but called for winter access. As stated earlier, we are extremely alarmed by ongoing atrocities against civilians, including events reported in the Oromia region. Any spread of violence against civilians fueled either by hate speech or incitement to ethnic-based or gender-based violence are early warning indicators and a precursor for further atrocity crimes. Uh, we have proposed a couple of different weeks in July. We're cautiously optimistic that they will accept one of those dates, uh, which will enable us to go ideally in the second half of July. The United Nations Security Council extends the mandate of the multidimensional mission for the civilization of Mali for a year with 13 votes in favor of the OSC. The resolution by the stress that some of Mali's strong reservations have simply been ignored in its final version. Confort further underlined the government for opposition to the freedom of movement of a mission in the execution of its mandate in the field of human rights. The diplomat said that his country does not intend to execute the provisions approved by the UN despite their adoption by the Security Council. After a nine-day journey across the nation, the remains of the Democratic Republics of the Congo's independence hero Patrice Lumumba have been laid to rest. 
The Brussels money for the remains of former Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba coinciding with the country's 62nd anniversary took place in Kinshasa with the presence of Felix Tukshidi, President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the new Sound Gueso, President of the Republic of the Congo. Ceremony retreats the highlights of the life of independence hero. Shortly after the coffin contained Lumbaba's gold to the was taken to the special Bill Muslim, erected on the avenue that burns his name and lists the Kinshasa International Airport. The public should have access to the momentum at the end of August. The government of Colombia, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua are on alert the given the arrival of the second potential tropical storm to cross the Caribbean this season. Colombia Meteorological Authorities announced measures on the arrival of the astrospheric phenomenon to the north of La Guajira. In this sense, they informed that it has characteristics associated with a tropical storm, so they asked the national and local authorities to take actions to prevent the greatest number of damages. Also, the National Emergency Commission of Costa Rica declared an orange alert in most of the country, while the Minister of Public Education suspended classes. On the other hand, the government of Nicaragua declared that the preventive measures are being maintained to attend possible emergency situations. U.S. Supreme Court imposed political limits on federal governments to regulate carbon emissions. The W.S. Court on Thursday ordered the restriction of some fu functions of the Environmental Protection Agency under the Clear the Air Act. The Court's actions will limit the federal government's ability to combat climate change. Groups of court justice have noted that the ruling raises new legal questions about any decision federal agencies make. President Bates' administration announced that despite the restrictions, uh, it will continue to work in new environmental regulations. And we have more news coming up after this final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back. The President of the U.S., Joe Biden, announced that he will make a donation of $800 million in additional arms aid to Ukraine. During a press conference at the end of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Summit, President Biden ratified that his government and allied countries will help Kiev for as long as necessary. He also pointed out that after the summit in Madrid, the bloc has been strengthened as a response mechanism to what they consider Russia's intentions in Ukraine. On the other hand, the U.S. president informed that he will ask the countries of the Persian Gulf to increase oil production to combat the prices of crude oil at a global level. President Vladimir Putin warned that Russia will respond and reciprocally if NATO military infrastructure is developed in Finland and Sweden. The head of state assured that Moscow does not have with Sweden and Finland those problems that unfortunately it has with Ukraine. The Russian leader warned that if both European countries want to join such as military islands, they will should understand that in the case of development of armed infrastructure contingents, Moscow will be forced to respond reciprocally and create the same threats to those territories where hostilities are created for, for Russia. The Organization of Oil Experts Countries, in its expanding format, OPEC Plus, resolved to continue with the Agus Agreement to moderately increase the crude oil production. Through a telematic meeting, the islands established a quota of 43.85 million barrels per day from Agus, distributed in 26.69 million poor members of the bloc and the rest of 14 LX countries. 
The agreement is uh, being renewed as purchases from consuming countries to increase production and push prices uh, downwards. Compliance with the codes depends on producers being able to reactivate their operational capacity after the pandemic driving collapse of the industry. To follow up on the agreement, the agency will be met again on August the 3rd. French Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna symbolically handed over the European Union's rotating six month presidency to Czech Prime Minister de Perdifalada on the sidelines of the North Atlantic Interior Organization Summit in Madrid. To kick off its presidency, the Czech government will meet with European commissioners for talks. Central European country of 10.5 million people and EU members since 2004 has vowed to focus largely on the repercussions of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. It will also help to contain the refugee crisis and launch a post-conflict reconstruction efforts boost the bloc's energy security, defense capacities and economic resilience and improve the resilience of its democratic institutions. The German government on Thursday presented a plan to facilitate transgender people to formally change their name and gender and the indicates all rules that requires them to get an expert assessment and a course authorization. Under the plan self-determination, a lot of adults will be able to change their first name and legal gender to a registry officers without further formalities. The Accident on Transsexual Law, which took effect in 1981, currently requires individuals to obtain assessments from two experts and them to court decision to change their gender of official documents. Over the years, Germany top course tagged down other provisions that require transgender people to get divorced and sterilized and to undergo gender transition surgery. The legislation incorporating the changes will be brought to the cabinet later this year. Protesters march in Manila on Thursday as Fernandine Marcos Jr. was sworn in as the new Philippines president. They call on the public to remember the atrocities committed during Fernandine Marcos Sr who plundered and brutalized the country during the, his 20 years rule. We are here to show that we will continue to stand up and be with our countrymen in holding the government accountable and for the incoming administration. We are here to show that the voice of the people should prevail even amid fascism, repression and poverty, and the church will stand with them. Now shifting topics in India, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare recorded 18,899 new COVID-19 cases infections and rise the total number of careers to over 100,000. After 120 days of relative control over the virus, the nation is experiencing and rebound despite the fact that more than 1.9 billion vaccines were administered and the recovery rate exceeded 90.5, 98.5%, according to the official records, 104,555 people are still infected and the accumulated number of deaths is more than 500,000. Telos are expanding signal with new satellite parameters and seeing more than ever the world connect to us and our stories are being heard all around the globe. These parameters are in place since universe in Latin America and the Caribbean, both in English and Spanish, and quite soon further changes will be implemented for the signal in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. This news multi-platform will continue providing trustful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. 
With that story, we have come to the end of this is brief. But you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. Telesur English, I'm from the South. I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.